Do you know what is MVC? And why Ruby on Rails follow this architecture? Well, this video will certainly help you understand that. Welcome to the online tutorial series on Ruby on Rails. In this video, I am going to tell you about the MVC architecture in the Rails framework. So, let's get started. Over the last 20 years, websites have gone from simple HTML pages with a bit of CSS, to incredibly complex applications. With thousands of developers working on them, to make working with these complex web applications much easier, the developers use different patterns to lay out their projects to make the code less complex, and easier to work with. By far the most popular of these patterns is MVC, also known as Model View Controller. The goal of the MVC pattern is to split a large application into specific sections, that all have their purpose to illustrate each section. Let's look at an example, where a user is requesting a specific page from a server based on a particular URL. If the user is requesting, the server will send all the request information to a specific controller. This controller is responsible for handling the entire request from the client, and will tell the rest of the server, what to do with the request. It acts as a middleman between the other two sections, model and view, and should not contain very much code. The first thing that happens when a controller receives a request is, it asks the model for information. Based on the request, the model is responsible for handling all of the data logic of a request. This means that, the model interacts with the database, and handles all validation, such as, saving, updating, deleting etc. of the data. The controller should never directly interact with the data logic. It should only ever use the model to perform these interactions. This means that, the controller never has to worry about how to handle the data that it sends and receives, and instead only needs to tell the model, what to do, and respond on the basis of what the model returns. This also means that, the model never has to worry about handling user requests, and what to do on failure, or success. All of that is handled by the controller, and the model only cares about interacting with the data. After the model sends its response back to the controller, the controller then needs to interact with the view to render the data to the user. The view is only concerned with how to present the information, that the controller sends it. This means that the view will be a template file, that dynamically renders HTML based on the data. The controller sends it to the view, and does not worry about how to handle the final presentation of the data but instead, only cares about how to present it the view. The view will send its final presentation back to the controller, and the controller will handle sending that presentation back to the user. The important thing to note about this design is that, the model and the view never interact with each other. Any interactions between the model and the view are done through the controller. The controller between the model and the view means that, the presentation of data, and the logic of data are completely separated which makes creating complex applications much easier. This all is just theoretical though, so let's look at an example of how this design handles a request. Imagine a user sends a request to a server to get a list of cats. The server would sends that request to the controller, that handles cats. That controller would then ask the model that handles cats to return a list of all cats. The model would query the database for a list of all cats, and then return that list, back to the controller. If the response back from the model was successful, then the controller would ask the view associated with cats, to return a presentation of the list of cats. This view would take the list of cats from the controller, and render the list into HTML, that could be used by the browser. The controller would then take that presentation, and return it to the user, thus, ending the request. If earlier, the model returned an error, instead of a list of cats, the controller would handle that error by asking the view that handles errors, to render a presentation for that error. That error presentation, would then be returned to the user instead of the cat list presentation. As we can see from that example, the model handles all of the data, the view handles all of the presentation, and the controller just tells the model and view, what to do. So, that's all it is about the basic architecture of MVC. I hope you have thoroughly understood the MVC architecture. See you another time with more interesting stuff. Until then, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and press the bell icon for notifications on our new upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.